You're watching Studio One, news, weather, sports, and entertainment. The Egyptian pyramids have long been objects of fascination. Many have theorized how these man-made wonders of the world were built. One woman says she has discovered hidden clues among the ancient paintings and artifacts of ancient Egyptians. Maureen Clemens is here to tell us her theory on how a pyramid is made, the clues left behind by the ancient Egyptians, and the way her theory can be used today. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. So there is little known about the techniques of the Egyptians used while building these great pyramids. What is your theory? Well, there's theories out there that it was manual labor. My theory is that the Egyptians harnessed an abundant natural resource, the wind, to erect their pyramids and build their megaliths. All right, so how did you prove this theory? I went out in the field and demonstrated it. My first obelisk was about three and a half tons. And I lifted that off the ground in 25 seconds with two guys and a kite. The second obelisk was about 16 tons. I didn't even need the two guys, just used the wind as the motive force. That's great. So we actually have a video of, the, of this theory being proved. Can you explain um, what happened with this test? Well, this is a two-ton pyramid stone. Your average pyramid stone weighs about two and a half tons. And we're out there with a nine mile an hour wind and a kite. And it took about two seconds to pull this pyramid stone up the first two courses of the pyramid and about 12 feet off the other side. So that's great. You saw that this theory actually worked. Um, but after you proved that it worked, what was the next step of proving that the Egyptians actually had these tools that could be used? Well, when I started um, building obelisks, I was out in the field with a 400 pound obelisk and a, thr a three foot by four foot parafoil kite, a kid's kite. And in a 25 mile an hour wind, the kite line would slice over, the, open my leather gloves and slice my hand open. And I realized there had to be a better way to control kite line. So I went to the art of the Egyptians and I noticed everybody was holding an ankh. You weren't cool unless you were holding an ankh. And it looked to me a lot like a figure eight that rock climbers use to control line. So I went and found one. I went some very interesting places in Los Angeles to find an ankh bought one, it works right-handed, works left-handed, and I gave it to some rock climbers who showed me about six different ways to use it. Okay, and what is this tool specifically? It's okay. called an ankh, and it, it's supposedly my whole life I've been told it's the symbol for life, okay. but if you look it up in the hieroglyphs, it actually means a breath of life, which is a different connotation. Okay. And I, Go ahead. Okay, so what other specific tools did they use to make these pyramids? Well, once I realized that the blinders went off, that this is a tool, and just as the crook and the flail, the consummate symbols of Egyptian power are tools, I'm like, why aren't the rest of these things tools too? So you look at the hieroglyphs in a completely different way, and I saw scepters and chisels and kites. So, okay. so what was the differences between the kites that you used and what you think that they used back with what the Egyptian used back in the day? What we did was, my, when I was erecting an obelisk, we used a nylon kite for safety because these are very, very powerful forces that you're dealing with. And the Egyptians made sails out of linen, and they had a way of weaving linen so fine you could put seven layers of linen, one on top of the other, and still see the nude human form underneath. We've lost the ability to weave linen that fine. So I started off with a nylon kite and wound up with a natural fiber, which is only a half step back in reverse engineering, made out of silk. All right, so how does beer fit into your theory? Well, I got a challenge to build a couple of pyramids. I'm like, oh my God, okay. <laughs> and so one of the things you want to do is make sure the ground is really hard because if you're using log rollers in soft soil, they lock under pressure. And so we started working with permazyme, which is a natural enzyme that hardens the ground. And I'm like, smells like beer. They said it is, it's actually a beer derivative. And the Egyptians, because the water was so polluted, drank beer for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They had light beer for the kids, heavy beer for dad. And they had these grain silos. And did the Egyptians notice what happened as the grain fermented? So we did some experiments with Budweiser and Coors, and Coors works the best. <laughs> All right. Well, we have pictures of river rocks, um, which were used to help move these large weights. Um, how important was this to use how important was it to use things like this available to the Egyptians? 
Well, one of the questions is, how do you get a pyramid stone so close together you really cannot cram a playing card in between them? And the folks in New York were really smart. They used uh, cannonballs as ball bearings. I'm thinking, wow, they don't have cannonballs in Egypt, but they have dolerite, which has naturally occurring spheroidal weathering. It weathers into spheres. So we took that and did an experiment, and using three spheroidal river rocks, we were able to get two two-ton stones so close together you can't put a playing card in between them with three rocks and two 15-year-old teenage girls. All right. Well, what can we expect for the future with your theory? Well, my next project is we have been working on control systems, and I am working on a full feature-length documentary to be able to demonstrate the theory and compare it to other people's theories. All right. Well, sounds great. I think that there's a lot more to this theory that we could even learn, and it's great that we have videos and stuff like this to help us learn more about it. So thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me.